We have a no cooling call up here on another one of these houses. It's up on this lake we've worked at quite a bit. And another company has uh, given a diagnosis. So we're going to we're just going to double check behind them, give them a second opinion. So let's go see what we got. So tell you what, if we do a replacement here, our guys are certainly going to love this. No dirt. Looks like the service side's over there. Let's go around the other way. All right. So here's exactly what I find. This is open to the inside of the house. Just like we were talking about before. Putting things back together, no matter what. So going to assume it was the blower motor tripping the breaker they've got it unwired here this is number 10-2 wire I don't know what that's all about like all four speeds are pulled off. Looks like they're all on. They have no power. Okay, so this used to be a package unit. And they uh, took it out from out there and changed it to a split. And now one of the, the main duct still starts all the way down there. It, this was some some crazy ducting. The returns are not so bad, but that 14 or 16, it looks like a 14 inch supply, runs down there and makes a 180 into this trunk line because they didn't want to change the trunk line coming back this way. Crazy, man. So. I think our motor's bad because when I tried to start it, thermostat must be in delay again right now. When I tried to start it, it, it made a really loud buzz and it was really slow to start, but it did spin. So I thought maybe this cap that's installed by the run cap bandit was weak. Well, I unwrapped it pulled it off and it's good it's reading 1490 and it's a 15 so I'm just gonna lay it right there for the time being until we figure this out but I believe it just needs a simple fan motor change and this thing will be back up and running uh, I don't know exactly how old this furnace is So, I don't like these clean effects. This is the American Standard version of train, same thing. Looks like the hose has been leaking a little bit down here. And the electrical's a little weird, so the way they apparently didn't convert it, because when I went outside, the customer was with me so I couldn't film but the uh, the disconnect was pulled on the outside unit stuck that back in the outside unit started up and this came in and this was hot now I just heard it click which means obviously our five minute thermostat delay is now over with so I'll show you what what I got when I tried to start it and there was a 
spark up in there. It did try to spin some, but it's not real stiff. Let's try one of the other speeds. Yeah, I'd say the motor's gone. Um, you can see some smoke off the motor up there. So it needs a motor, not that big of a deal. So they want a new system. They want this duct all fixed and replaced. They want it zoned so that the back master bedroom can actually be comfortable. This electrical straightened out. Um, so I can certainly go along with all of that. But in the meantime, they've got no air. So, let's, uh, let's see if we can put a motor in this thing real quick and give them, give them some temporary air so we can get up here in the next week or two. And change all this out um, sometimes when you do stuff like that you knock yourself out of a sale but you judge by where you're at and what you're doing and uh, Nicer people, nicer house. I think they have better things to do with their time than shoot the heating and air guy a line of baloney. So, uh, and even if it does, let them, let them breathe till fall or whenever, you know, even if they do run it another season. I mean, the way they were talking about suffering with the imbalance and the ridiculous high bills. Um, I believe they are definitely already sold on the replacement. They just weren't crazy about the other company's pricing. Um, not crazy about their sales methods. And I'll tell you what, if I get them some air right quick, To live with in the immediate, I'll end up being the hero for a short period of time and get the sale on the long term as well. So, one good thing about these uh, eight and ones is it does have a three eighths nut driver on it. So we'll pull this blower all the way out and take it outside with us. And see if we can change the motor. Get them back up and going. So anyway, you know, when you are the second opinion, Sometimes it's easier to get the job. But when you're the first one diagnosing something that gets condemned, you've got to be careful of what kind of ammunition you give your, your second opinion, if there is one, to make the sale based on some of your actions. Hello. No, I'm under a house pulling a floor out, so I didn't didn't see what, what's going on.
Oh, yeah. Somebody's added a relay. And, yeah, but the heat side is good, so you got the lay on the heat side. It's just cool side. Um, try, to get, try to get us in two picks. Uh, is that uh, relay stuck, stuck on? Picks. Is the relay yeah, stuck on? Yep, got no way straight through with no power to it. Do you have another no, one? No I already put it on there. Well, then don't charge them anything. Don't charge them anything, and I'll just take care of you. You sure? Yep. Okay. Done deal. No. Um, they're a... Uh, you know what you're doing all day. Yeah, they're an on-standing good customer, so let's just, okay. not, let's just not charge them anything, and you'll, okay. you'll, yeah. you'll still get paid for the call. Don't worry. Well, all right. We're just going to let you know what we need to. Appreciate no, if you got them going, everybody, everything's good. Yeah, right, All right, All right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look. I might, I might have one more. I'm gonna look in just a minute. Should, should I tell them about the rehouse? Just cause they are replaced relay. Let go that. And that I told you, don't worry about it. They're good to go. Cool. All right, good. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Now, in the midst of all that, found a nice stiff piece of. Tin wire. So I'm going to use that to hold all this back. And I saw it just when I was about to unwire all these thermostat wires. And I didn't want to, but I needed them out of the way. So I found this piece of wire, just tie it through that hole right there, hang the board, and we're good to go. So let's go get this blower fixed, and we'll slip it back in there. Be the hero of the day on a 87-degree Sunday afternoon, and we'll lock the sail down for whenever they're ready. We'll do it right away or next season, whatever they want to do. Um, of course, we have no idea the condition of the heat and whatever, but this being a 2007 furnace, I would say the emergency to replace it has passed, and we'll give them a little time to breathe. All right. So we drug it over here. Might as well stay in here in the shade. Looks like we may actually be able to see the sticker. Usually they're covered up. I can make this right side up on the screen, but it's still upside down to me. This thing should have a pretty big motor in it. Not but a half horse. Well, okay. All right. So I know most of you guys have seen a motor change more times than you can shake a stick at. But whenever I have left it out or fast forwarded or something like that, I'll have some guys that'll say, I wish you would have showed it. So, obviously, if you don't want to watch it, just fast forward it. Left my dad gum wiring tool back there on the furnace.
so. Let's hope this one, it looks like it's been changed. But I can't really tell for sure. That's not very dirty. But let's hope it's not a sour one. It is. We'll do some of our tricks, but obviously. That was an easy one. I don't really like these whatever you want to call these little things Jimmy Wigglers but they work so get back on there. you gotta be careful not to poke their encapsulation Now, in my opinion, most of the time, the fan motors that have ground wires on them is redundant, but this is the one type of bracket that is largely suspended in rubber. So, if there is a motor that it is necessary to hook that ground wire there up this would be one of them when it's in that bracket I know everybody's got their own ways of doing things and that's just my opinion hands got a little sweaty there and I couldn't couldn't put my new gloves on yet be a counterclockwise application so I don't know about any of you guys but what has happened to me a few times is I've gotten real happy putting it back together and ended up blocking the diagram that tells us which way the reversing leads go. So counterclockwise is yellow and purple together. And that's already how it is. Nope. 
thought it was. A little twisted up on me there. Yeah, it is. Yellow and purple are together. So it's already set up for the counterclockwise rotation. Now, I don't know if some of you guys will say keep it. Some of you guys will say take it out. But these motors come with, with this thing with this band on them. But this bigger rubber one here seems to fit it a lot better. So I don't know if there's maybe some different different kinds of those different kinds of these bands that uh, you know that it fits it better sometimes but whenever possible I'll throw these away and use the ones that were in the band because they seem to fit tighter. Got to get them clocked exactly right. go in there and then I find it's better pull them back out and stick them in the bracket first and then over the motor it's just easier to get it to go all the way on or at least that's what I've always experienced Top bolt in first. And then go back and put the arms on. And these things work pretty good. It's not that crazy about them. When it comes to user friendliness of changing them out but when you got them you use them and if you look at the marks you can pretty much always put them right back where they were Even though the motor might be different, it's still going to be spaced correctly because it sits down in there this way. And that way, stick the flat part of the shaft that way. It'll avoid us from having to take it all the way out. I'm going to face the wires that way because that's the service door side. in and 
I've just always got all three of them in first before cranking them, torquing them, whatever you want to call it. found it smart to do and this look at that little bitty hole it has so that doesn't make it super easy to add to one of the screws fight with it a little bit and the biggest thing you don't want to let happen on that if you spin it too hard you'll just break that right off so we've got the ground wire connected you always need to secure your wires to where they can't go down in the blades so we'll do that once up here and we'll do it again out here in front of the board. Those brackets are actually designed to put the tip of the capacitor in this slot. Uh, may rattle a bit, but it won't slide out because of these two holes there. So. That's the design of that. So I usually just go ahead and use that thusly all right so let's take this back well we might as well adjust our blower wheel here where it's easy A lot easier right here than all the way back there. Now normally I make sure to adjust this wheel to account for some motor wear and allow it to go in the direction that it's going to as it wears and hopefully not cause problems but as we discussed a minute ago we're going to rely on this motor for probably two to three days. And then we're going to come take it right back out. And this house is getting a 20 sear system zoning all new duct work so those of you that are thinking you know that's a brand new motor you're using and going to waste you're correct but it's worth it 
to give the customer some temporary comfort. While we get up here conveniently to get the whole job done. So while I may do a before and after on this, as far as the whole duck job and the whole system goes, probably won't be part of this video. It'd just be too doggone long. And YouTube doesn't like the big long videos and neither do the viewers. So let's stick this thing back in there right quick and fire these people's air up. All right. That worked out good. Didn't have to unwire anything, just took a couple screws out. I pulled a little more down there and swung it all over. Anyway, let's stick this thing back in there. slides right in there so any of you that don't have this little Nebo LED light it's a three-speed there it is on low it is really handy to stick in the cabinet and work on things you know so I stuck it right there and it lit all that up over there where I could slide that in easy. Really a nice little item to have. So, I recommend one. Rechargeable, little LED deal. I really like them. Go ahead and get the screws back in this thing first. And I admit these two are a lot easier with a drill and one of those flexible. Uh, extensions but way back here the less you have to carry in and out the better so it's kind of a wrist breaker to get those all the way in like that But, it's better than uh, multiple trips or trying to drag a bag or a tray or whatever at the same time You're trying to carry a blower. And, I'm getting old, so the least amount of steps I have to take to get back in and out of here, the better. And the yellow is common, so it's going to white. So, we are going to use all four of these. But they're not going to be, oops, they're not going to be four speeds as the other one was. So 
So here in just a few minutes, and fire this thing up. Have some people in the house smiling. Tell you what, train is not the only one that over the recent years has made their units serviceable, very easy to work on, and components easy to replace. Um, I guess it's all what you're used to, but to be honest with you, In my opinion, an ICP unit is very easy to work on, among the easiest. And as little as I like ream, I really don't like ream anymore at all. Because I remember when they were a really good product. I do not like them now. But, I'll tell you what, their gas furnaces are extremely friendly for service and if you've got to work on them they are really easy to work on okay that was the neutral I'm going to park the red, put the blue on heat, it's that one I dinged up with the sparks. Sure did. I believe I welded that one. <laughs> and we've got no spares. How about that? And I didn't just weld it a little bit. I got her stuck pretty good. Hope the black one ain't too bad. That's the important one for now. Stuck a little bit of heat to it too. There we go. All right, so we got black on cool, burn up blue on heat, red on park, yellow is on neutral. We're gonna set up the counterclockwise. Door switch kind of halfway taped. Put the rubber back in there. Everything looks all right. Let's hit the power 
and wait out our five minute delay. So look at that. I guess we're not gonna have a five minute delay. Listen to that. We'll find that on our way out of here. She's running. back up and running. There's a piece of tape here somewhere. Making that noise. Tell me they thought sticky back meant looks like somebody's been in it for some sort of dumbed down testing or something. I don't know what they were doing. Try to stop it from making that annoying noise. Man, we may have to actually stick a screw in that just for these few days. Well, looks like they thought it goes together with glue. So, the package unit used to be down this way. So I'll show you this ridiculous duck travel. All right, so that's a 16. They have one 16 inch duct coming out of the four ton out of the side of the plenum, coming all the way down to here. Making a 180 degree turn back into the original trunk line from the package unit that sat right outside that wall. So you can imagine how well that does not work. Utterly ridiculous. They could have at least come out of the end of the plenum since it was the only thing connected at all and it wouldn't have hurt any other runs. They could have come straight out of the end and that would have took a 90 degree turn out of it. They could have ran straight down here and made their 180. <laughs> So, the correct way to change from package to split would have been to take all the duct down right at about the furnace for this half and at least turned it around, if not just rebuilt a new piece and connected to that half and this half from the plenum. But we're going to do something much better than all of that. So maybe I'll get a... Uh, an after shot of this after we've done our duct work because this just looks terrible and I'm quite sure it works terrible too and these are a mile long so there's no way one 25 foot box of flex reached all that come around to this side some more of them that are pretty long Two tanked water heaters with about 75 elbows 
Look at that. It's going up and back down. How about that for flue pipes? That kind of tells you there's been no inspectors looking at these. So we'll one day or another sell them tankless water heaters to go there. Here goes the other mile long flex ducts. And they go all up through there. So let's go make sure they've at least got condenser running and check the refrigerant real quick. Not gonna go through all this and not make sure now that's uh that's a unit for a little small attic room kind of like a bonus room that's what that does let's go over here and looks like they're playing in the pool with the kids See, there's where the package unit used to be. There. Oh, yeah. Pouring baking hot air out of the top of it. I don't think I really even need to put gauges on this thing. See what it is. I think it's a four time that she thinks it is. than this duct they got on this furnace. I tell you, I would have rather had the package in it. But anyway, nice place, little lake out through there. All right, got them going. 